Hey, what is up guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros and I'm back with a little project. Nearly two years ago, I made a video of taking my old Xbox 360 and submerging it in mineral oil to create a cool piece to have in my room. But today, after looking at the Xbox that gets zero attention and doesn't even get used anymore, I thought it would be pretty cool to replace the Xbox with a full system using hardware that I have lying around. How well did it turn out? Let's talk about that. So before I get into this video, I would like to mention that I could have done this a lot differently, but it would have required a lot more planning and this video was honestly a spur of the moment type of idea. So I first started out with taking out all the old parts from the tank. This called for a lot of paper towels and a towel on the floor. Thankfully I had the tank on top of a mini fridge that I had in the corner of my room so pretty much any liquid leakage would isolate to the top of the mini fridge where it could easily be wiped away. Taking all the parts out was a messy task. I could have saved the hardware and let it drip dry because as far as I remembered it was a still fully functioning Xbox 360 but let's be honest here it's an Xbox 360 and I doubt it's really worth all that effort so into the trash she goes. I then decided on the hardware that would actually go into the PC for the job and I was debating between the i3-2100 and i5-2400, mainly because I didn't want to give up the i5-2400 to the depths of oily death. So I decided to opt for an i3-2100 and the motherboard that I went with was a micro ATX Asus board that I got on eBay months back and been using in a lot of videos for $40. Micro ATX was really the only way I could make the system work with how small the tank actually is, and it also came along with 8GB of DDR3 RAM, plenty for what I needed for. Storage was the limited option. I decided to toss one of my old Silicon Power S60 SSDs into the mix. It only has 120GB of storage, but if I need to, I can throw another SSD in there at some point. It is very hard because you cannot throw a functioning hard drive into mineral oil because of the moving parts. Only SSDs can work submerged in mineral oil, so my options were very limited. I then had the fun task of trying to fix the minifigures that I had in the tank with the Xbox that got knocked down in the process of trying to remove the older hardware. I tried at first to get something to poke at it and try to pick it up without having to submerge my whole hand, but I decided to do it old school and just dive right in. Oh, that was a fun task. Next step originally was to empty out the tank and then replace it with the hardware and fill it back up. But I couldn't find anything that would suffice to hold all the oil and I didn't want to siphon out all the rocks that were at the bottom. And I was kind of getting very impatient. So of course, I just laid the hardware in and just let it go into the tank and use my hands to organize it. Doing this method made cable management very hard to do and it pretty much wasn't a priority anyways with the cheap power supply that went in with it. And the size of the tank really made it hard as well to organize the cables especially with oil still in the tank as I mentioned. Now with all the hardware submerged I grabbed a monitor booted up my system and tested it out. My original concern was that the temps of the system would produce under oil would be really bad without having a pump or radiator combo and that was mainly a deciding factor that kept me from putting in a GPU with this system along with the fact that I really didn't need one. All I needed was a display out. I then loaded up IDA64, crossed my fingers, and ran a full system stress test for an hour to see how well it got. And it really only peaked at 58 degrees Celsius, which is perfectly stable. I do plan on buying some more mineral oil at some point to actually top off the tanks, along with getting a power switch to install on the board, because I've been having to manually reach down and start the board with a screwdriver. Now all of you are probably wondering, what the hell is the point of a system if the temps aren't going to be super chill and you're submerging in mineral oil? Well, silence is the answer to that, because when the fans are submerged in mineral oil, they slow down and stop due to the thickness of the oil that they are pushing, leaving a silent system that actually operates with pretty much normal temperatures. Now, the main reason I actually built this was after an inspired conversation on our last Toasty Tech live stream that me and Jackson do every week, and we talked about the idea of creating a Minecraft server. We were having a throwback conversation about Minecraft, and the throwback idea of when we used to host Minecraft servers on the YouTube channel way back when this channel first started. So I decided to take the time of making a machine that could do server hosting for Minecraft and be near silent as long as I needed to host a Minecraft server and could just sit there and do whatever other games we wanted to do as well. The i3-2100 and 8GB of RAM is plenty for the needs of a Minecraft server, upwards of 100 plus people, which is more than we need, and we could throw some add-ons on there if we wanted to try it out. But now the real question is, would you all be interested in hopping on this server? We may open it up to the public at some point and also we may host other games 
games. If you have any recommendations, please comment down below. It needs to be something that we can easily set up on a Windows based machine. I'm not changing any operating systems or anything, but if it's something that we can set up pretty easy and will be really popular with our audience, we'll definitely consider it. But again, that about wraps things up here, guys. If you like this video, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you haven't already, subscribe for more content from the Toasty Bros, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace out, guys.